have Botox. <laughs> I thought you weren't listening. I haven't hit play yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for Botox with you. It's approaching my favourite time of year again. That's right, Christmas is two months away, but before then is another time of year I love. Halloween! <laughs> I don't love Halloween, I've lied to you. To get in the spooky spirit, I've made a video over at Penguin Platform all about why we're so desperate to be terrified by reading scary stories, which you can go and watch by clicking on this. This button. And we're making this little companion piece on this channel too. Hashtag spawn for books. Spawn for books! Spooks! Spooks? which spells spooks. It's a Halloween video, it's about scary stories, you're welcome. At uni, I did a module called horror and fantasy. I don't know why I'm awful at horror films, but I got my highest mark for any work I did at uni on that module, so I thought I'd share with you what I'd learned. I'm plagiarising myself. When you ask most people to name an example of classic horror, they'll jump straight to things like Dracula, or Call of Cthulhu, or The Telltale Heart, etc, etc. But what about titles like 1984, or The Hound of the Baskervilles, or Desperate Housewives? But like, actually, there's a thing called the social anxiety model of horror, which is essentially that the horror comes from a place that's close to home, that the killer lives on your street, that you should question everything and everyone you know, that there is nothing that you can trust sound familiar. It's on show in movies like The Thing and Psycho, and it's found in so many TV dramas, but in books, the social anxiety model is found most commonly in the form of the unreliable narrator. You know it, you know you know it, and if you think you don't know it, I'm gonna show you that you're wrong. Warning! Here be spoilers, so if you don't want to know anything about the books I'm going to talk about, they're in a list in the description and you can make up your mind as to whether or not you're going to skip bits of this video. Go on, I'll wait. Not long. Okay, you ready? Cool, here we go. Gone Girl. In Gone Girl, Nick tells you things and then three chapters later says, oh, by the way, I wasn't telling the whole truth there. So you think, well, you're a bit of a bad person. And then Amy's bits are so saccharine sweet. They seem like they're really badly written, but they put her in a sympathetic light. So you portion more blame onto Nick and then boom, twist. Turns out she's been lying the whole time and you're horrified at what length she'll go to. And just at the end when you're thinking, well, you've lied to me. I think you're an awful person. He only goes and stays with her, which is more horrifying. I just, this book. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, who is having something of a renaissance and rightly being recognised as the queen of creepy, and creepy is the best way to describe this book. There's no jump scare, you're just unsettled the whole way through, and Mary Catherine is the first person narrator, she has you with her, your sympathies with her, and then suddenly, boom, she's a psychopath, and then you go back and read the book again, and you'll see it in a whole different light, and holy cow, this is creepy. And even beyond unreliable narrator, the idea that everything we accept in life as gospel is not quite as it seems, is everywhere. You look at something like the Stepford Wives, where this utter utopia is hiding a huge conspiracy by a group of elite men. The String of Pearls, which is a classic Penny Dreadful attending the tale of Sweeney Todd and his pie-filling, throat-slitting extravaganza. So you're eating these lovely delicious meat pies and then suddenly it turns out they're actually delicious because they're human pies? No thanks! And more recently, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, where the Hollows, who can't be seen by most, try and eat the eyes of other Peculiars in order to reclaim their human form, and there's one guy who can assume the form of whomever he chooses in order to get people on his side. That is creepy. I actually haven't read those books, they're on my to-do list, but I did get hold of this delightful copy of Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Ruth, which is a kind of fill-in-the-blanks backstory book about the world, which was one of my favourite things about seeing the movie. So I am so down with this creepy, otherworldly, peculiar stuff. And that's just some of them. I could go on and on about this. I did and I got a first. But I'm gonna leave this video here, and if you want more horror chat, you can go over to Penguin Platform and check out the video I did there. The link is in the description. Watch it, it's very good. And while I've got you, cast your mind back to TV shows you've loved or books you've devoured, and share with me in the comments how the social anxiety model fits with those. I'm telling you, it does. Cue comments telling me I'm wrong. I'll just delete them.